It's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Powerade, the official sports drink of the Florida State Seminoles. Powerade, power through. And by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. And now your hosts, Gene Deckerhoff and head coach, Leonard Hamilton. Welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We talk Florida State basketball today, and Coach, a lot to talk about. FSU and ACC play midway through the season, and the wins continue to pile up. Now we've won six in a row. Well, we're happy that we're making progress. Uh, the interesting thing about our team is, is that we won a, a certain amount of games, and we're getting better, but the ceiling is very high with this team. I don't think we've come close to reaching our potential. I'm excited about where we are. But we have a lot more, I think, a lot more room for improvement. We take on a ranked Louisville team and take them to overtime with a huge win at the Tucker Center. And then we have a chance to see the Green Viper team play in a 22-point win over Wake Forest. It's all part of today's show. Highlights galore on today's show. Well, I'm excited about where we are once again. And to get the Viper team on the floor, uh, it excites, really excites our players. On today's program, highlights of Florida State's wins over Louisville and Wake Forest and also a chance to visit with Raekwon Gray. Skinny Raekwon Gray will say, redshirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale. That's on today's show. Stay with us. Welcome back to our show. We promised you a lot of highlights, and let's get started. A sellout crowd watches Florida State take on 16th ranked Louisville at the Donald L. Tucker Center. And coach, with something about Florida State and Louisville, this series goes all the way back to the old Metro Conference days, and we know Louisville is a tough team to play. Well, Louisville's a very talented team, but we, we got off to a pretty good start. Uh, it was nip and tuck. Uh, we got down, we, we uh, had to catch back up, and it was just a, a game of runs. DeAndre Cabangeli showing he can shoot with either right or left hand, and he's going to lead the way in this ballgame with a game-high 22 points. And Terrence Mann always seems to come out big against better opponents. Well, we dug a little hole for ourselves at the beginning of the game, but I thought that uh, we really fought back and we finished around the basket. And they make a run and we'd make a run. It was a hard fought game for both teams. So two of uh, the 20 points for Terrence Mann in the ball game. Mann played a full 40 minutes out of the 45 we played in this game. Raekwon wow. Gray, we'll visit with Raekwon a little later on the show, Coach. He's got a nice stroke from distance. I didn't realize uh, that uh, Terrence played those many minutes. Did yeah. you say 40? 40 minutes. We played 45, yes. Wow. Well, we normally don't like to uh, have guys playing those, that many minutes. When Fiondu Cavangeli gets hot, he gets red hot. He made all four of his three-point shots in this game. Well, it's one of those games where we needed every one of them. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, basketball, basketball. What this assist from MJ Walker, a beautiful dime to Cavangeli. There's no doubt that that was a very, that was a very uh, sharp pass, a very aware uh, decision on his part. FSU in the half court against Louisville, and here comes Raekwon Gray again. Good day to feature Raekwon on our show. Great pass by uh, Trent. Trent Forrest getting in the lane and drawing the defense and getting a wide open shot. One of four assists by Trent Forrest going to work on the offensive glass. Nice little pivot move and layup. There's no doubt that uh, Fiondu is finding his way around the goals. There's no doubt about it. Great steal here by, by Forrest. Uh, finish, great finish at the rim, but we still we still are fighting. You know, we still uh, are climbing out of the ditch. And Louisville is a, a great basketball team. They show, they've shown that they have potential to, to be a Final Four team. For our guys to, 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 to keep going at them, you know, I thought was real, really important. Another steal, <laughs> another great play, a good finish. Uh, Trent Forrest is very strong in this game. One of a career best five steals in this ball game, and he knows how to finish at the other end. Big game for your junior point guard out of Chipley, Florida. Trent Forrest. Coach, in this ball game, I think I mentioned that Kevin Gilly made four of three points. He made two of six in this ball game, but he has made six three point shots in the last two ball games. Well, there's no doubt that he's versatile and he's really uh, doing a very good job for us. As a matter of fact, the good thing about him is that he's only scratched the surface of his potential. MJ Walker with 11 points, a big 18-foot jump shot, and he's going to try to break down the defense again. He's got good range. Here's a triple. We needed every one of those baskets. You see, we're still trailing. <laughs> you know, we're playing well. These highlights uh, look good. But once again, here we are. Here we are with a three-pointer that we really need, still trying to climb uh, back into the lead. Terrence Mann with three three-point shots. David Nichols, a graduate student from Albany, drives the lane, gets the layup. David comes in and gives us great decisions. He's a very matured player. 
there's no doubt that he's been very instrumental in, in the success we've had this year. How big was that three-point shot by Terrence Mann? Like no doubt about that. He, he's really getting better and better. Uh, that was a huge tip-in. Uh, clock's running down, game's running down, we're still behind. We're trying to climb out of this ditch. And guys are consistently making plays at the play. Later, we were down 10 points, and here's a nice steal by M.J. Walker. Maybe that, the biggest play of the game. That might have been the biggest play of the game, no doubt about that. He was really on top of it. And tie ball game at 63 all. Watch the steal again, goes to work. Nice layup. Look at the bench going crazy over there, and the crowd just standing and screaming. Coach, we're going to overtime. Louisville with a two-point lead, and here's Trent Forrest with the tying basket. And there's still time for Louisville to win this ball game in regulation. Now that was a tremendous defensive effort by Trent. Did you think Phil Schott was going in here to beat the buzzer? Well, there's, there's, there's no doubt that he was he was he was he was laser beamed on that goal and uh, he got a good shot off and just didn't go in. Second time this season we go to overtime against a ranked team. We beat LSU earlier in the Advocare Classic. Now in overtime, we're gonna score the first six points of the ball. That's always good to get that lead early in overtime. That was a big time play, great pass by by uh, uh, Terrence. Oh, look away. My gosh, he kind of fooled me. I, that was, uh, he made a good quarterback, huh? <laughs> and the, the tip in, the follow here, it rolled around the rim 360 degrees. FSU now with in overtime against Louisville, uh, another offensive rebound. Coach, we out rebounded them in overtime and outscored them in overtime. A hard fought victory for the Knowles. There's no doubt that that was, might have been another play you could consider play of the game. Cavagelli going to get that rebound. Six foot, 10 inch, Fiondre Cavagelli, seven rebounds, 22 big points. It all adds up to a Florida State win in overtime. And that guy right there, number 30, he seems to make three point shots when he gets off the bus against us. Coach. Well, there's no doubt that he hit three in a row that put us back on our heels. I'm, we were very fortunate to come away with a victory. Now Florida State up by five points, 4.2 seconds left. We're gonna get the steal at the end and that's gonna be the ball game. And Florida State is gonna knock off 16th ranked Louisville, 80 to 75 in overtime at the Tucker Center coach. This was a big, big win for us. We didn't have great numbers. We only shot 37% from the floor. We only shot 30% from the, from the threes. But we did all the little things that it took for us to win the game. And anytime you can come away with a victory, because a nationally ranked team, a rich traditional program like the University of Louisville, it, it gives you a good feeling and a certain level of confidence going into the remainder of the games. And Florida State, with that win over Louisville, moves above 500 in league play at 5-4, and four, and we get ready to host Wake Forest. We'll have highlights of the FSU Wake Forest game a little later on. Anytime you beat a ranked team, Coach, that's a huge, huge feather in your cap. Well, every game in the ACC is a hard-fought game, but being successful against a nationally ranked team just elevates our status. Louisville holds a place in college basketball that our program's trying to get to. We, We've made progress over the years, but they won the top 10 winless programs in the history of college basketball. So that's definitely was an important victory for us. Up next, we'll get a chance to visit with Raekwon Gray, who had two big three-point shots in that Florida State win over Louisville. That's coming up in just a few. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We've seen exciting highlights of Florida State's overtime win over Louisville. A little later on, more highlights coming as Florida State hosts Wake Forest. But Coach, now, I teased at the beginning of the show, skinny Raekwon Gray. <laughs> and the reason why I said that, because he's lost 45, 50 pounds since he enrolled at Florida State. Well, he's doing a very good job trying to trim his body down because he's an athletic, very skilled youngster. And uh, sometimes, you know, that, that guys who have his body type struggle uh, with, with getting in the basketball kind of shape. So he's working hard at it. He's made tremendous progress. And as he gets better, uh, more in better condition, I think you're going to see his abilities continue to improve. The journey is never ending. There's always growth, improvement, and adversity on the horizon. Just continue to take it all in and do what's right. Continue to grow. Continue to live in the moment. When redshirt freshman forward Raekwon Gray, who is also known as Turk, first arrived onto the Florida State campus, he was regarded as one of the best players in Florida and a legend at the historic Dillard High School where he led his team to back-to-back -back state titles. However, as a newcomer to the college game, all he wanted to do was get better and be a part of something bigger than himself. I wanted to learn as much as possible, as quick as possible, so that I can play as fast as possible. But playing time would have to wait. 
as the coaching staff and Gray himself decided it was best for him to redshirt. Well, like I said, when preseason practice came around, I knew that it was kind of difficult for me and to adjust. And you know, I think having another year to adjust would like really help me. So. But before he could play in the Leonard Hamilton system, before he could be an integral part of the junkyard defensive scheme, some lifestyle adjustments needed to be made on and off the court. And every time I came in to shoot, he was, he was coming into the locker room sweating, and I would always ask him, where'd you come from? He was like, I was running on a, a treadmill. The summer days would now start at 6 a.m. Cardio, weights, and then skill training, all in order to reconstruct his body and increase his endurance to excel at an elite level. Yeah, he, he definitely worked really, really hard to uh, lose a few pounds, and it showed, and everybody, I'm pretty sure, is able to see it. He jumps higher, he's quicker, much faster. While fans are worried about how a preseason injury to Phil Kofer might affect the team, players like Raekwon were confident they could pick up the slack. We just looked at it as a next man up mentality, and he pushed us to you know become better and step up in that role. And he helped me out a lot with him being out. He taught me a lot. I just looked at it as an opportunity for me to you know prove myself around the country and just build confidence. So when he does come back, that just helped me as a, and helped the team. So. Raekwon Gray triple, his first made triple of his career. Gray has continued to grow and do its right, all while staying in the moment, logging huge minutes for the Noles so far this year. On January 22nd, he scored seven big points in a critical ACC win over Clemson. I think the red shirt year has benefited him because it's given him a chance to, to sell in. More and more playing time, more movements on the court, and more big plays are a result of Gray's hard work according to Coach Hamilton. This high level of play comes as no surprise to his teammates and coaches, as they know what type of person and player he is. Uh, Raquan has, has matured, and he has a better understanding of what we need from him. And he's, really, he's a really confident guy, and uh, always assertive about the stuff he, he does. And we both been working really, really hard, and it showed in different games this year uh, what we're capable of doing. Turk's hunger to improve and confidence should excite Seminole fans for the future, as this is only the beginning. Well, Raekwon is, is, has only scratched the surface of his potential. And, and he's a, a young man with a, a monthly tool of talents. He's very versatile. He's... As the Noles get deeper and deeper into ACC play, Gray's contributions will be key. And if his growth continues on this upward spiral, then the sky will be the limit for Raekwon Gray and this Florida State basketball team for years to come. The never-ending journey has just begun. I'm Brandon Spencer for the Leonard Hamilton Show. Raquan Gray from Fort Lauderdale Dillard High School. Good to see the big fella and a chance for you to get up close and personal. Coach, Wake Forest comes to town now. This is a team that beat us last year. <laughs> well, obviously we were very unhappy with the loss that we, we gave uh, them last year, but this is a new year and they came in playing well at the beginning of the game. And, and once again, we had to really, really fight to, to win this game because it could have gone either way in the first half. The opening basket of the game, we're going to see this over and over and over again. A dunk by Chris Camaggi and also see some good three points off the snide. Philip Kofer had gone over the last game from three point land. Well, it's just a matter of time, but it feels going to get back on top of this game. Speaking of getting back on his game, he had gone over for a couple of ball games, and PJ Savoy gets big three, big three balls. Well, there's no doubt that we're in a situation where we really feel that at some point we all, our guys, will start playing together. And this, this was a, a play, a steal, that led to an easy basketball. Coach, you saw Anthony Polite come up with that steal, and he gets an assist as well. And here's Phil Kofer again. It's going to rattle around, and we get the offensive tip in by Chris Camaggi. Well, Chris Camaggi was on point in this game. He was active. He was really hanging around that basket and making play after play. He had a career best 20, uh, 12 rebounds and 22 points in this ball game, just off his career best. And Terrence Mann has really worked on his three-point shot, hasn't well, he? He's gotten better and better, and there's no doubt that he's becoming a consistent three-point shooter. Three-point shooting all over the court. And Devin Vassell had not played in the last two ball games. He gives you some instant offense off of that. Well, Devin has, he's going to have a great future. Wow. 
There's Kamaja once again, hanging around the basket, using his length and his jumping ability and athleticism to, to really get some easy basket for us around the hole. Florida State taking on the, the best offensive rebounding team in the conference, Wake Forest, in conference games. We out rebounded on the offensive end 12 to 6, and another big basket by Phil Cover. Well, there's no doubt that Phil has been, was our leading scorer coming from last year, and we, we definitely need to get him back to shooting the way, way he was last year. Great play, great penetration, finding uh, the big fella in the hole by itself. One of three assists by Phil Coper. Here's Devin Vassell again, off the bench, two for two from three-point distance. There's no doubt that he's an extremely confident, for confident young man. We think the future is very bright for Devin. We lead at halftime and never give up. We move the ball around, and here's Phil Coper, deep left corner, another bullseye. He was three for six from beyond the yard. Well, I'm, I'm, I really enjoy seeing him gain his confidence back because it's been tough on him with the injuries. Wrap around underneath pass to Chris Kamaji. He scored most of his points in the first half. He had 20 points, not 22, in this ball game. Three short of his career best. Another slam dunk. I like watching these highlights. <laughs> Florida State, uh, again, offense is going to lead to defense. A nice steal by David Nichols, and he'll lob ahead. And that was a big crowd pleaser there. We had a couple of those in the ball. Great execution, a tremendous unselfish play. Yeah, Florida State with a steal. And gives a great, I don't know how he found Cooper underneath. And Cooper a double pump and gets the layup and the harm. And that, 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 Wake Forest is a pretty tough team around no, that rim. No doubt about that. But here again, you see Phil just being strong with the ball. They grabbing him and tried to pull him back, and he finished. That's what you call a big body being finished. <laughs> Good to see Phil, uh, 13 points coming off a zero-point game, the, the, the game before against Louisville. So Phil is back. He, I know he's been having that foot issue, but it looks like he's getting back and healthy. And another alley-oop slam dunk by Terrence Mann. Well, there's no doubt that the, that was an exciting part of the game. Anthony Polite. How about your two guys off the bench, Coach? Redshirt freshman and true freshman. They both shoot from distances. This well, neither one of them had played that much uh, in the last couple of games. But once again, uh, you see them coming back in, and they, they, they didn't miss a beat. It looks like he's almost coming down when he's able to grab the ball. Uh, great assist from Trent Forrest to Kevin Gillian. Oh, by the way, PJ's back in the game. Well, we love to see PJ and, and uh, Phil shooting as well as they, they, they shot in this particular game. Saw Anthony's dad, Michael Polite, in the ball game. He comes to almost every ball game and he gets the steal of the layup. Big, big day for Anthony Polite. Well, we definitely needed those guys to get, gain some confidence. Wow. Uh, speaking of confidence, he almost stepped on your toe, Coach. PJ, <laughs> so if we get PJ back to shooting the ball that well, and uh, Vessel and our young guys, wow. Here you get. There, there's Harrison yeah. finishing his play. Our players are really excited about that. Justin Under watch this behind the back bounce pass, and Harrison Prieto with a layup, his second basket of his career, and uh, the, the, the Green Viper squad is, strikes again. Speaking of what I thought, I thought that Light was going to get the, 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 the three point shot, but we'll take that slam dunk, won't we? Look at the Seminole bench here again. Watch it again. This is an offensive rebound. Will Wyatt flushes with two hands. Well, we think the future is very bright for Wyatt. Wyatt has a tremendous Wyatt. potential for our program. He hasn't gotten in the game and played as much as we think that, that he will in the future. If we can just stick with him, I'm telling you, you're going to see a lot of great things come from him. You shoot 40% from three, 56% from the floor, you're going to win basketball. And we shot 50% from the free throw line. <laughs> that wasn't very pretty. <laughs> after, after shooting about 75% and the overtime went over Louisville. Florida State beats Wake Forest by 22 points, our largest margin of victory this season in an ACC basketball game. And with that win, we improved to 7-4 and four and extend the ACC win streak, Coach, to 6. That's one short of the school record. Well, we got to keep stacking on W's. Nobody goes to the NCAA tournament with seven conference wins. Up next, a look ahead as the Seminoles travel to Atlanta and Clemson. Well, it's just about that time to say so long for this show, but Coach, we got work ahead on the road in Atlanta and then in Clemson, two teams we've already played before and beaten this year. Well, there's no doubt that uh, you know a little more about your opponent when you on the second time around. But we also remember both of those games were very tough games for us, and then we played them at home. So going on the road is going to bring in a whole different approach uh, by their team, and it needs to be won by us because it's going to be more challenging being successful on the road. FSU basketball, head coach Leonard Hamilton. I'm Gene Deckeroff. Thanks for joining us on today's Leonard Hamilton Show. We'll see you next week. Go Seminoles. This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show, brought to you by Powerade. 
the official sports drink of the Florida State Seminoles, Powerade, Power Through, and by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine.